Uh, I'll try to speak in English as fast as I can. Uh, for this show, I need the assistance of this beautiful lady. Okay, we are all set. Start the timer. Here we go. Okay, uh, I'll talk about the Omniscient Debugger. Uh, the idea, uh, we, we need some foundation concepts first. The concept of a bug, this is the log of this lady, Grace Hopper. Uh, she coined the term, and that's his log her log file. This is going back to the past, how she looked like. But what is a bug? We have to understand three things. There is the defect, uh, it's the problem. There's the failure, what we observe. And then there's the bug, it's a negotiation with the client. Bug or feature. Then this guy said that debugging is twice as hard as writing the code in the first place. Therefore, if you write the code as cleverly as possible, Therefore, by definition, you're not smart enough to debug it. Write dumb code to people. Um, and debugging is expensive. So we need tools uh, to debug. Fortunately, in Python, there's a lot of tools uh, to, to do debugging. And there's this concept of omniscient debugging that I'd like to explore. But if you do not know about the debuggers in Python, then uh, I'll show to you some sessions of common line debuggers because uh, I have several friends that use VI and they use just PDB and there are several other better tools that you can do console debugging. Uh, these are some of them uh, and they have uh, called uh, coloring and uh, uh, lots and lots of features. So uh, they could do better than just PDB. Uh, and there's also post-mortem debugging. Post-mortem debugging uh, is not omniscient debugging. You go in the past, but you are restricted to look at the stack trace. So uh, you are uh, chained to the past. This is a chain of post-mortem debugging where you are running a code, and then there is some bug, and it happens. You start again the interpreter. You go back. You do uh, PM post-mortem. Then you try to go climb up the stack trace and see what went wrong. It's not omniscient debugging. Uh, so what is omniscient debugging? For that, uh, there are several attempts to implement an omniscient debugger for Tran Melissa. Hey, the first idea from Bob Bowser in 1969, several other attempts. The latest attempt is the EPDB by Patrick, Patrick Saban in Python. I'll talk about that later on. We still have to, uh, half the speech, so there's plenty of time. Uh, usually debugging, you have a timeline and you do step traces, and doing step traces, what happens actually in Python is the bytecode running. Uh, okay, uh, in omniscient debugging, you have the timeline of execution, but if some things go wrong, you detect uh, the failure, and you want to go back to the past to find out where the defect is, you can trigger a second timeline, and in the second timeline, you have two modes of operation. You can do redo or replay. In replay mode, you are restricted to do exactly the same that happened. But in redo mode, you can take a different step and uh, do things differently. Uh, the EPDB by Patrick Saban supports redo because at each point the application changes the state, it forks. It forks, it duplicates the memory, so you have a different process, and you can go back to, that, to any of the process before and continue from that. Uh, my attempt to explore this was a different way. I'm not capturing and forking the process at each time. What I'm doing is that at every time that application changes the state, you simply capture all the events. One guy called Bill Lewis published an article in Dr. Dobbs' journal about omnis and debug. This is what looks like the application he implemented in Java. This is EPDB by Patrick Saban in Python that does the forking strategy. And PODI, it's the attempt that I made, and we still have one minute so I can show you the code. And this is the code. We have about uh, 200 lines of code, but the only thing that matters is this uh, guy here. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. It's my brain is a little bit overclocked. It's not functioning properly, but I can do this like this. Um, dispatch line, it's here. Uh, the only thing that matters is at each time uh, code in Python executes, what I do is I capture the values from the previous execution and I schedule a capture for the next execution. 
I look at byte codes, and when I look at the byte codes, I capture all the byte codes that matter. Store at the TR, store value, store const, etc. That's it, guys. Thank you so much.